Hey everyone, this is Ahmed Kira with the Cribble Solutions Engineering team. In this video, we're going to walk through setting up AWS ElastiCache in your own AWS environment to work with Cribble Cloud. First, we're going to talk through why you do want to do this. Then we're going to go through a list of the various steps we're going to take, and then we're going to actually complete those steps. Why would you want to do this? There's several use cases for Redis or ElastiCache with Cribble. One of the main ones is enrichment, robust enrichment. Think of it thread Intel repos that can span several gigabytes in size. By doing the enrichment through Cribble Stream rather than in your SIM, one, you can have faster detections. Two, you can lower the cost of your SIM and ultimately help improve your security posture. Next, other scenarios include stateful aggregation as well as quota enforcement. So think of, you want to limit data you're sending to Elasticsearch. Once you're over a quota, you want to either move that data to an object storage, or you want to drop that data, or maybe even sample it. This is where Redis can come into play. And these are just a sample set of scenarios that you can achieve with Redis and Cribble. And there is a knowledge pack, a Redis knowledge pack that's available in our dispensary at packs.cribble.io to help you get started with Redis uh, and Cribble. Here's a walkthrough of the prerequisite steps we're going to take. One, we need to request static egress addresses for our Cribble Cloud organization. To do this, you'll open a ticket with Cribble support. You will include your organization ID, which is in the top left corner of this Cribble Cloud portal page. And once that access is granted in the access details tab, which is also in the top, we will now see egress IPs and this will list static egress IPs. If you don't do this, the, this list is dynamic and will change periodically. The other thing we need to keep in mind here is the region where this Cribble Cloud organization is deployed. In this case, it is US West 2. So anything we do in AWS, the ElastiCache instance we set up needs to be in US West 2. Let's now go configure AWS. We'll go to console. From the AWS console, we'll navigate to VPC. And we need to either create a new VPC or have one available where in the same region uh, as our Cribble Cloud organization. And in there, it needs to have at least one subnet that we'll reference later. In this case here, I have four different subnets. Next is security groups. We will create two security groups. First one here is going to be to allow the local devices or the network load balancer to access ElastiCache. And so this is where we're mapping to port 6379. We will assign the security group to our ElastiCache instance. And next and more importantly is a security group for the network load balancer. This is what will allow external services like Cribble Cloud to access that ElastiCache instance. And this is also where you're gonna take those static egress addresses from your Cribble Cloud environment, and you will add them in here as inbound IP addresses with a port range of 6379 and protocol of TCP. Now we're ready to configure or create an ElastiCache cluster. So from the AWS console, we're gonna search for ElastiCache or go to it here in our recently visited. And once we're in here, before we create a cluster, we need to create a subnet group. And subnet group, we're going to point to the subnets or the VPCs that we created earlier. So here's the VPC we created earlier, as well as the which subnets within that VPC we might want to have ElastiCache in. We're just going to get, leave it as the default. Once a subnet group is created, now we can go back and create a Redis cluster. When we create a new Redis cluster, we're going to select configure, create new, leave cluster mode disabled, call it Cribble Cloud, leave all the locations default. Cluster settings, we might change this replicas to one. No type, we want to make sure that we have enough memory to accommodate our use cases for Redis. Connectivity. We're going to choose existing subnet. So this is a subnet group we just created. And next, in the next screen here, we need to enable encryption and transit. 
This will be TLS. And then also authentication. So we need to do Redis authentication with uh, default user access. And then this is where we're going to give it a Redis password. After we give it a token, we then, and also the token does have to be a, at least 16 characters. And keep this token handy because you will not be able to change it again. Next, we need to add security groups. So we're going to add the internal one here that we created earlier. Backups are always a good idea. Logs are always a great idea. I like to put them in CloudWatch. Once we're done with that, we click on Next, validate our results over here, and we click on Create. This process will take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. Now we see our Redis cluster status is available within the ElastiCache Redis cluster screen. And when we click on that cluster, we can see details of it, including the two nodes, the primary one and the replica. We need the IP address of this primary one. So we want to copy this and open up a terminal window do an NS lookup on it because we are going to need this address in the next step. Now we're ready to configure a load balancer and associated target group. For that, within the AWS console, we need to navigate to EC2 and load balancers are located within the screen. We're not doing anything with EC2 per se, but this is just where they're located. Before we create a load balancer, we need to create a target group. And so we're going to create a target group, point to an IP address. We're going to call this Cribble Cloud Redis Protocol. We're going to do TCP, but you can also do TLS, but then you'll have to manage your own certificates. We're going to map to port 6379. VPC, important to select the same VPC that we've been working with up to now, TCP health check. And... IPv4 address. This is where we're going to point to the ElastiCache IP address. This address we obtained earlier from the lookup, this is what we're going to put in here. Same port, 6379, include as pending, and create target group. This will take a couple of minutes for this group to get created. In the meantime, we can go to load balancers. And now we're ready to create a load balancer referencing that target group. This is going to be a network load balancer. Give it a name, internet facing, same VPC as pre before. We're just going to select all of these VPCs here for now, but this is where you would have mapped to just the uh, availability zone where or the subnet for which ElastiCache is installed in. Security group, this is important. This is where we're going to select that one security group here for allowing Cribble Cloud access into our ElastiCache environment. And listeners, we're going to listen on 6379 TCP. And the select group, here is that group that we are just creating. and create load balancers. And this should take also a couple of more minutes. Uh, and once we have this complete, we can check in connectivity. Now to confirm that our load balancer is up and running, here is our load balancer. It is active. We click on it. We can see information about it, including the target group. Click on the target group over here. And from there, we can see here is the target group pointing to the Redis instance that is currently in a healthy state. Now we're ready to test connectivity from Cribble Cloud to our Redis ElastiCache instance. To do that, we need to go to our Cribble Cloud instance, and we need to be in the worker group that has the egress addresses that we allowed access to. And so every worker group a Cribble Cloud Worker Group, that is, will have its own egress addresses. In this case, we're in the default worker group for the egress addresses that we uh, specified. 
And once we're in here, we need to go into some pipeline that has a Redis function. So we're going to go to Processing, Packs. If you don't have the Redis Knowledge Pack installed, go to Add Packs, Add from Dispensary, and look for the Redis Knowledge Pack. And once you find that, install it. And then now let's go inside this pack. In here, under the Pipelines tab, is a wealth of different pipelines to help you get started with Redis. We are going to do a test here against this quota enforcement one. And once we're in here, we want to locate a Redis function. So you should see number five here, this Redis function. We're going to open this up. And what this pipeline is doing as a background is basically tracking the data size for different groups of events, different types of events. And if you're over a quota group or if you're over a threshold, you are then going to basically have the data either dropped or sent somewhere else. So this is about tracking what that usage is. And over here, we can see this is where we put in our Redis information. To get this, we need to go to the load balancer page in AWS. And so here's our load balancer that we set up earlier. We want to copy the DNS name. Once we do that, DNS name is going to go in here. We need to make sure that this is Redis with two S's to reflect that this is TLS and port 6379, ideally in single quotes as we have here. TLS, in this case here, we're using self-signed certificate. We're not using any um, any uh, created ones, customer created ones. So we need to say validate certificate to be off. And now we can test it. So let's bring up a file. So here's this log file or, or, uh, that has these various Windows events in it. If we go to the out tab here, we know this is working because there's this field that is added to these events, usage thus far. And we can see the number is incrementing for different events. And if we run this again, now we'll, we should see these numbers even larger. So these numbers keep growing, keep going up here to reflect that we've had more volume added to this quota group. And then we can also come over here to look at our performance to see how is this doing compared to all of our other functions. And we can, sp we can see here, this is only five events. When you have thousands of events here, the per event latency is going to be substantially less. Uh, but this is the latency here from accessing Redis for these five functions. And this is also why it's important to have Elasticash slash Redis in the same AWS region as your Cribble Cloud environment. Troubleshooting. When you're troubleshooting connectivity, you want to make sure you're on a pipeline that has a Redis function and all your parameters set correctly. Run a test, either the run button or save a change to the pipeline. If there is a problem here, like here it says, due to timeout, you can click to view the full log. A lot of times the messages in here, in particular this one, can be an indication of what's going on. It could be a security group. It could be you have the wrong password. Or most likely what's happening in this case is we don't have Redis with a, a, a second S to indicate that this is TLS. Also, you want to make sure that validate service certificate here is set to no, as in this case, we are using a self-signed certificate with Redis in our own private zone. And once you validate or make changes, uh, and then now in this particular pipeline, we know this is working and communicating because this particular metric here is updating. And we can see for this event here, now it's 1440, now it's 2660. And if we run this again, uh, this is basically counting the size of these events and updating Redis to reflect how much data has come in for this low quota app quota group. So with this, we validated now that we are talking to Redis the way we should.